Hello and welcome to the Magic Mirror Podcast. I'm your host, as always, Khan the Trinket Mage. And with me, as usual, is 33 Elk. Hello. But today we have a special guest. Alex, aka Salubrious Snail. Hello. We have quite a few topics to talk about today. We're going to ask Alex a couple of questions. Uh, we're going to talk about doing the thing in Commander a little bit. And then some spoiler discussions now that the full set is out. And then... We got some questions. We have a lot of things actually from the previous question section, uh, the question zone. So stick around for that. You could hear some of the... We got some interesting questions. Let's just say that. Before we get into those topics, this podcast is sponsored by Card Elk. They make dry erase tokens. If you use our affiliate link, it helps support the channel. And you can use code Magic Mirror for 10% off. All right, let's interview a snail. Oh, wait. First, most important question. Uh... The mirror itself, you know, during the podcast. Do you want to be on the left or right side? Because I got to put your snail PNG somewhere. Oh. Do you want to be with elk or, or trinket? <laughs> I I'll be on I'll be on the left side. I don't remember which side that is, but that that sounds like a good place to be. All right, I'll put you on one of the sides. <laughs> one okay. or the other. You can have me alternate rapidly. Oh, that'd be good. Okay, okay, yeah. So we we have a few questions for snail. Um, starting off, I, I've been curious about this for a while because I've talked to you, I've gotten advice from him indirectly, and he seems to give you a lot of advice. Hans, the mysterious figure behind all of your YouTube videos. <laughs> I, I need to know how long have you known Hans? Was Hans like instrumental in you making your channel? The advice Hans gives you like uh, he is everything. Yeah, he is a longtime friend. I've been playing Magic with him since we were both 12. Uh, so he's just been kind of my my Magic friend uh, constantly. And uh, we worked together to make the, the $25 decks a few years back. Um, so, yeah, we just talk to each other about Magic a lot. And, uh, yeah, it's it's fun. And he, he, he is kind of somebody I, I bounce video ideas off of a lot and... <laughs> you know talk to about the sorts of things that i want to make videos on interesting now how many other people do you bounce ideas off of in terms of your friend group because i have like a separate discord server where all my friends that play magic i just threw them all in there and i was <laughs> like you know i'll put ideas in there and like have people ask me about tell me about like what they think of videos and so on and so forth in terms of irl friends uh i'll i'll, I'll shoot ideas at, at random people sometimes um most of the time it's just like thumbnail uh suggestions or title suggestions uh i I love to to get get feedback on that and (laughs) run that by people but um yeah that's that's about it um i I don't have anybody else that i'm like constantly bouncing video ideas off of i don't have like a an inner circle (laughs) where yeah where's the secret snail society Mm. Yeah, it's it's in a mysterious hidden location that I shall not disclose. Even if we existed, we wouldn't tell you about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what you should have called the Patreon. Your Patreon. <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> now, I, I'm actually really interested in this uh, $25 like EDH deck pool. Because I had something, I'll say similar, but maybe opposite uh, with my friends. How many people were in that? Like, how many people participated? Five. And That's such an odd, terrible number. We did a mixture of four pods and five <laughs> pods, and it was interesting. <laughs> did you play? Did you play normal or like star? Uh, I don't know what that means. Oh man, star EDH. I haven't heard about that in like a year or two. You, do you want to explain star? Uh, it's if I remember correctly, it's that you face off against the two opponents that would make the point of a star across from you. Oh, that's. Yeah. Odd. So your opponent, your <laughs> opponent on your left and right, are not your teammates, but them being in the game is irrelevant. If you knock the other two players, not on your left and right, the farthest two, then you win. That's odd. I, I, I have not played that. Obviously, uh, only in Commander, man. That, that, that does sound <laughs> interesting, though. Uh, honestly, it's like a fun way to add to five players. You know? Yeah. 
honestly i i don't mind playing five pods from time to time uh although a lot of times whenever i play a five pod or the couple times i've played a six pod uh i'll suggest that people run more aggressive decks so we'll have a big aggro pod of like five people <laughs> oh exactly <laughs> that, no that 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 that's good for keeping the the game length down <laughs> I just try to play combo decks to like speed it up, so I don't have to like attack. And it's just like, right, here's my combo. We can all, we can now split it to two pods of three. You know, <laughs> that that's fair. That that also does it. That's interesting because like me and my uh, my three like college roommates, because um, after our second year we all moved in together, we did kind of the opposite of your twenty five dollar pool. Since we had um, on campus, they gave us access to like printers, and we got X amount of like printing money uh, every quarter it, we had the quarter system it, it's weird um but i took a photography class so they like octupled my printing uh limit oh and they never took it down so we just had access to as much full color proxies as we wanted <laughs> so we did the opposite of your 25 five dollar pool where it was like everything was super high power like there were no budget considerations at all but we didn't play like it wasn't CDH. It was just really high power commander. And that's like the crucible where I really got into it. Interesting. <laughs> that's that's a funny way to, to spend a bunch of printing money <laughs> like that. Because <laughs> I, I, I had the same yeah. thing in my college, but I never thought to... I mean, I probably thought once or twice to spend it on magic cards, but never, <laughs> never thought that seriously <laughs> about it. <laughs> okay, I have a pressing question. Okay. Uh, this is this is the most important question I think I could ask about your channel. Uh, at what point did you decide to go from the flashbang esque white background of your videos <laughs> to a nice off like eggshell color, like yellow? <laughs> uh, that was like uh, I want to say it was like beginning of the summer. Um, yeah. I'd been getting comments for months about from people complaining about uh, the white background and. Yeah. There was there was like a couple videos where I tried it for the intro, and then eventually I was like, "Yeah, I'll just make this the permanent background." Uh, uh, that, and that is that. Oh, sorry. Continue. I was gonna say I've, I've gotten somewhat fewer comments about the the white <laughs> background, although there are some people who will still you know be watching the video at midnight with a hundred percent phone brightness and still you know <laughs> whine at me in the comments, of course. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is actually why I chose gray as the background color of my videos. It is a hundred percent just out of spite for your older videos, having like a <laughs> pure white background. <laughs> Although it does add to the MS Paint aesthetic of it. It, it does, yeah. I, I think having an off-white is better. I might, I might try a different off-white, uh, like a, because right now I'm using like a, an off-green. Uh, I might try like a, an eggshell or a, a cream color thing. Um, but yeah, probably a darker color is, is better. <laughs> The white is just what I started with, and I was seeing success with that, so I kept doing it. I can't believe I had moving backgrounds for a while. When I go back to watch those, I'm like, man, this sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I should have gotten there, to the solid backgrounds like way sooner. There are a lot of things that look cool in theory, and sometimes they look cool in practice, and sometimes they don't. Uh, there's yeah. there's one video SAS I watch, Ben again. He has a nice moving uh, pattern background. In fact, when I was... Uh, my, my channel banner, it's like this filigree sort of deal. Um, I actually originally drew that to be a pattern that would be like 5% opacity, like moving in the background of my videos because my thing was just very still my, my PNG tuber. But uh, eventually I moved on to just, you know, not doing that because it's too much work. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got another question. Yeah. Are you planning on doing anything crazy for the 50K? You're close. Oh, right? I have absolutely nothing planned for that. Uh, <laughs> oh I, man! I, I, if if I uh, if and when I hit a hundred k, I'll probably do something major. But I have not decided on anything for fifty k yet. So if you wanna if you wanna shoot me an idea, uh, I can. I don't uh, know. I have. I mean, I have an idea of what I'm gonna do for uh, some subscriber milestone. Uh. And it involves medieval weaponry and fire, but Ooh. I can't. I can't give that. I can't give that idea that's, away. That's pretty fancy. So. <laughs> it's, it's pretty fun. I can tell you guys off the podcast. I tried to, man. You know what? I because I'm in the YouTube Shorts like creator whatever. I don't know. I have like a manager there, right? For Shorts, and they were like, if you're in LA, 
and you can submit an idea to do a collab with Baby No Money. So I submitted the idea and it was like a list of things that you would need. And I like listed some of like, you know, lighter fluid and stuff. And I was like, I wonder if they would have taken it if I just didn't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> no, fire makes everything better. Yeah, all right. I, yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> See, my, uh, I, I heard you mention the 50k milestone, and my, my first thought was immediately, oh, I gotta, I gotta eat 50 eggs on camera in celebration of the, the <laughs> egg stack I talked about a while back. <laughs> oh, awful. Yeah, eat, eat 50, like, 50 copies of dingus egg or something. You know, like, buy 50 dingus eggs, mm -hmm. and then, like, yeah, sign I, them, I, 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 give I, them out. I, I, could, I could make a, a cake out of uh, dingus eggs and actual eggs, and then... Uh, give out 50 live snails. That that would be pretty cool. Well, wait. What if you ate escargot? Oh, no. Just... <laughs> that would be interesting. I, I I have not tried snail before, but I definitely would. <sighs> oh really? I like escargot. It's very garlicky. It's quite good. Huh? Like the snail itself is garlicky? No, snails are like you know they're just like mush. So they're usually um, oh, okay. cooked in like a gutter. In a uh, butter garlic sauce, and they oh. just kind of soak in the flavor. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like uh, oh, like morel mushrooms or another thing where like yeah, yeah. Like you, you get they work kind you of toast, the toast them in a bit of butter, and they just like sponge up all the tastiness. Are we pivoting exactly. into a, like a culinary podcast? Oh, I'd love talking about food. <laughs> so <laughs> I oh, could, well, but there you go. I'll try to derail this special. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man, I need to get some live garden snails. I want to put them in JoJo's tank because skinks eat snails in the wild, and I want to see if he'll like hunt them. Okay. I, I have an, I have another question for snail as well. If unless you have one cute. Yeah, we we know we can get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get the reins on this somehow. Okay. Okay. Well. Um, your channel banner. Uh, I know it's not drawn by you. It was drawn by a friend. Uh, if you want to give credit or, or whatever, go ahead and give him a shout, I guess. Yeah, yeah, my friend Mecca Catton, uh drawn both my icon image ban banner. Yeah, uh, but your channel banner, interestingly, has a couple of cards in it. I, I definitely see Torment of Hailfire. I think Court of Calling. I'm not sure what the green card is, but I think the last one's Kaya. Or is that, no, that's Ashiok, right? Uh, yeah, it's an Ashiok. Uh, that was Scape Shift, I believe. Ah, Scape uh, Torment of Hellfire, yeah. Yeah. Actually, that's your favorite card, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of my long time, uh, long time favorite. Um, although I, I, I'm also a fan of, of Doomblade as like my, <laughs> my, my, my first magic card that, that, that spoke to me. <laughs> <laughs> if that says anything about me as a player. Uh, blue, black control all the way. <laughs> yeah. Yup. On this podcast, we like to take a deep dive into our uh, guests' Instagrams. We call it "Explain That Gram," where oh we uh, go through. Don't, and, don't do uh, a hot ones bit. I. What, what do you mean? What are you talking about? This is legally distinct from uh, anything anyone else has ever done and/or said. <laughs> I had our I had our lawyers check this. Now, I uh, can you, um, Alex? Can you explain this photo? Hmm. I don't know. Look, I was I was inebriated that night. There was <laughs> there was I well, there was a lot going on. Uh, there there happened to be several feral cats in the neighborhood. So you know, one thing added to another, and it, it just kind of things things happened to go down a certain way. That's not what I expected you to say. I thought you were going to say like, "What photo did it send?" <laughs> uh, so my my question is, you don't have a like an Instagram for your channel. You don't have a Twitter. Uh, you don't have a Twitch. You haven't even have you even yoked those usernames? No, I I, I have interesting. Not. I th I want. I think you should at least steal the usernames before somebody else does. But like, how, how come? Like, what what do you, uh, in your opinion, like why have you not bothered to do that? This isn't. This is not criticism, by the way. I'm just curious. I guess why would I bother to do it? It's just extra things to keep track of, and I don't know that it would actually meaningfully improve my channel by any metric. I also just have an aversion to social media, so uh, yeah. 
I, I love I don't use social media in my personal life. Like I get that. <laughs> I, I like keeping my presence uh more more compact, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I yeah, it it I I originally was just gonna like rock out with my main account and just like make a Discord from it and I feel like I would be like uh, absolutely in the gutter more burnt out than I already am if I didn't make an alt account for my, you know, like business, you know, YouTube sort of deal persona. And it, it was you originally who told me that about that advice and whatnot. And uh, it's very valuable to separate, you know, work from life and not having to worry about it too much beyond what you're already doing. You know, I mean, and you're already making great like you're doing well. Doing yeah, numbers. I, it's it's definitely nice to have them kind of separated at least you know uh, on some level <laughs> yeah i mean honestly like i hate twitter i hate it so much it's like i never use it in my personal life ever and i think it's it's like fun to it's fun to like connect with like creators and stuff and i've definitely like chatted with a few people in dms and like you know everybody i've talked to is like nice um you know everyone's everyone's great but in general like Oh god, scrolling through it, every single post is like I want to just type, well that was really stupid, and then you click on it and the top comment is just, well that was really stupid. It's like what's the point of me being on this website? People already beat me to the only thing I want to type anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I'll I'll log in to to Twitter like once every few months just to look at things, but it's like a totally dead account. I don't ever post anything on it. And I, I will not be uh, <laughs> disclosing the username. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Uh, oh, sorry, continue. No, I was just gonna say I really do think you should you should grab the salubrious snail tag before somebody else does. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. At least to like stop impersonators, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, man, I love social media. I <laughs> we, we could not be any different. I. I think by far my favorite thing about YouTube has been the networking, just like creating stuff. And then like being able to talk to other people who create stuff has just been like the most like rewarding experience ever. I feel a bit like a, like an infiltrator, <laughs> a tad bit. I don't know if that feeling will ever go away, but uh, it, it's definitely there, but it's like really fun to just be able to like talk to people, bounce video ideas off other people, you know, um, celebrate other people's successes and stuff like oh man I, I love this like mtg community that on the youtube you know yeah i mean i uh, maybe i came off too negative but like again like again anybody who i've dm'd or has dm'd me on twitter everything has been really great i'm not like oh yeah i, I don't want to like say like oh i hated interacting oh, like, no, it was I'm... all everybody's been super nice <laughs> and like twitter sucks you know. is not a hot take everyone agrees <laughs> <laughs> You, you always extol the values of uh of mid-range in your videos uh, and it's sort of sad not not it's not sad that you extol these values but it's sad that mid-range just falls so short in a four-player format where it's just like pretty rough i mean like like condensed your arguments what would you say for someone who wanted to like you know just do a, a garbage like you know mid-range pile just like jam all their favorite monsters in there and just start beating people to death yeah i mean uh what do you, what do you mean like uh oh just like what, what's if good someone, advice good advice for yeah, how yeah. to do it or yeah just like a couple points to rattle off just like if someone wants to build a mid-range beatdown murder deck in commander you know the worst format to do that in what, what would you tell them to do i mean i think it's a pretty great format to do that in. <laughs> yeah i think oh, so wow. too actually what like uh like my 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 rata deck or my glissa deck taking those to a mid-power edh pod and just greeting out <laughs> It's, it's, it's pretty good uh you just get more lands than everybody else and just draw more cards than everybody else and just kind of <laughs> flatten them with your value like that's it's a, it's a good time edh cards right now are designed to just be like your deck is designed by wizards to be a mid-range pile basically oh don't start with the design by wizards thing my most recent <laughs> video i <laughs> oh yeah I, I yeah i did a video about package based design and you know like kind of forced designs a little bit uh it's not something i'm very fond of but i mean how do you guys feel about all these like commander cards coming out that are like really really pushed of course for commander and multiplayer formats i think i have a weird take i want to hear alex's first before i say my nonsense I mean, I think, I definitely think they, they try too hard with the packages. Um, I think they 
focus on certain keywords too much. Like it seems like every couple of years they find a new keyword that they try to push as hard as possible. Um, for a while it was playing from exile that that might still be ongoing. I, I haven't kept track. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think th there still is a need to figure out how to release cards that different people can you know build things with um, how do you make something that fits into different decks um, and i think some of the attempts at package-based design are attempts to do that uh, and they have mixed levels of success i think it's kind of funny the made for commander stuff right now is it almost feels like not real commander cards like if i look at look at the two valgavoths right we have the nine mana big splashy effect crazy elder demon that's in the main set and it's not going to see any standard play atraxas in standard it's a better animation target <laughs> in every capacity and then you have the valgavoth that was made in the precon even though it's the same big elder demon character it's a four mana efficient card draw engine that then late game becomes a flying beater and it's like this version feels like it was put in there for like a pioneer deck or something or it's like standard but it's not legal and standard it's legal and commander but then the the big splashy commander feeling card is the one that's in standard it's like the roles have been like almost reversed in some capacity where uh if for commander we get a lot of these like weird efficient value threats and the format you it, it used to be that you would never play any of those because the good efficient cards were the cards you played in like standard or modern and so it would just be the big dumb inefficient cards that you would play it's kind of weird yeah it's interesting that they they made the four mana one the commander one although i mean i think they're probably both designed for commander everything's I mean, designed yeah, you're, you're <laughs> designed. Like the, four, the four mana one does feel a little bit more like a commander design to me in my opinion uh it, it rewards you for more players in the game if you can somehow cause them damage, like off of a Mogus, for instance, something like that. Like, that's even in the pre-con. Or, like, a Sulfuric Vortex, that kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Like, the draw scales with each opponent. It's, I'm not saying it's a, it's not a commander card, but, like, it just doesn't feel like a commander card. Yeah. It, it, commander doesn't feel like the format where slamming a bunch of efficient engines into your deck should be the way it's played, at least to me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that 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 is the way a lot of people play it. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Valgavoth, the four mana one, is the first instance of like a payoff and an enabler in the same card that I'm actually kind of interested in. I really like the ward to pay two life on this thing. It's it's really funny that like you're rewarded for running instant speed removal by just like waiting mm. until it's not your turn and then removing it, so that way they don't draw a card off of it. I think that's really cool. It's it's kind of similar with the whatchamacallit ripper from uh, mirza karlov manor the one that has uh the blood artist effect and oh, the yeah, yeah, ward sacrifice a creature um, oh yeah that's that's kind of a similar form of you know synergistic design yeah most of the time like you know set up and enabler cards are pretty problematic but this is like one where it's like oh that's cute i'm a fan that it gets a little bit of value on the way out if your opponent sorcery speed removes it teach these players to play at instant speed <laughs> yeah okay i wanted to um I wanted to talk about doing your thing in Commander and like having your own thematic effect because we both made videos about it this week. Yeah, and I'm um, I'm curious like after you know reading through the comments, going through the videos and stuff, have your thoughts changed? Where where are you standing on? Uh, what does it mean to do your thing in Commander? Uh, I I know in my particular video, I think I part of me feels like I overstated a little bit the 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 severity of the social forces I, def I definitely got a lot of comments being like wow this commander for it sounds like trash why should i play this <laughs> it's like that's not quite what i was going for but i i i, I get that <laughs> um i definitely liked what you had to say in your video and it's it's, it's complicated because i think these are going to be dynamics that are felt strongly in some sectors of edh but then at a, at a different table in a different place it, it might not be felt that way at all so um yeah I, I don't i don't really know so much um exactly how universal uh the experiences i'm describing are or, or you know the experience of somebody wanting to do their thing and their thing being winning the game um 
I don't, I don't know how common that is. And I, I also don't know exactly how strong the, the doing your thing uh, sort of social expectation is in the first place. Like I get the sense that it's reasonably strong, but I, I have no idea exactly how universal it is. So ultimately, um, I, I do agree with the sentiment that a good game of magic comes from everyone having done their thing. It's really exciting when everyone had a pop-off moment. The thing is, is you can't force the magic. You, you can't force it. Uh, and you, that means sandbagging your plays, um, enabling an opponent by doing like a misplay, something like that. You, you're going to feel less rewarded if you do such a thing. If you want a do-your-thing game, either everyone should know what, what they're bringing I, I e like you're playing with friends and you're all like okay we're gonna build around this power level so we can all enable our stupid fun interactions that we want to see happen and then naturally after playing a few games you are going to see those combos come out and be very interesting like you'll have an interesting game where everyone's popping off everyone's doing insane stuff and someone sneaks a win in like you know at the eleventh hour those are fun games you cannot make that happen every single time that's something you have to accept. Like, that's my take on it, really, is you can't force this sort of deal. Like, you're going to have non-games, and that's okay. That's just magic, <laughs> you know? It just occurred to me that I've been making lots of fidgety noises, so sorry about the editing oh, you're going to have to do in post. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't, don't worry about that. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sit more still. <laughs> I, I, have, I struggle with that. So. Oh, dude, I, I, have, I have a squeaky chair that I'm sure Khan has picked up every once in a while. I, they say while well, I'm squeaking my chair like a monster for Khan. I'm so sorry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I was doing it to illustrate, but well, I don't need to. <laughs> So the thing is, I'm, I'm looking at like the, the Discord screen and I'm like, oh, it's not picking up what I'm doing, but I'm recording on Audacity, on Audacity. Not Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about Duskmorn. We all have a lot of things to say, I imagine, about these cards. Um, no, I have like two things to say. Oh, yeah. Well, I have, I have about maybe four, uh, but they'll, they'll be quick. They'll be quick. Uh, we, <laughs> no, it's okay. Go, go we, we've already talked about Winter. We've already talked about Head Shredder. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those will, those are in the previous podcast episodes towards the end. Um, so go ahead and watch the whole podcast, of course. But if you want the, our opinions on those sorts of spoilers, uh, they're there. <laughs> we won't be talking about them here. Before we talk about, before we talk about like the actual individual cards, real quick, I want to get you guys' opinions on the theme and the aesthetics because I think it's like, personally, it's not for me. But I do kind of like that it's a very serious set. I feel like Magic hasn't been super serious in a long time. And this is all, like, real scary, you know, very graphic stuff. I, I would like to hear Alex first here. Uh, I am a massive horror fan, and uh, I love so much about the aesthetic of the set. Um, just, like, all of the enchantment creatures. The, the, all of the fears look amazing. Um, I think the 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 kind of enchantment monsters thing as a whole all of them look great um i and i think i i talked about this a little bit with some some patrons but uh i have somewhat more mixed feelings about some of the technology components like uh i when i th there, there are some how do i put this when a card has technology that feels too on the nose. Like it, it feels too much. Like that's exactly what it's showing me. Like when I see, you know, something that looks exactly like a TV and it's called cursed recording, uh, right? Like baseball bat just has, a yeah, baseball bat. especially when there's something in the name that, that connotates that. I think that that breaks a little bit of the immersion for me. Um, whereas I think if they Does did that mean baseball is canon. Yeah. Baseball. I've seen a hockey <laughs> stick in one of the arts. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But I get that. No, breaking your immersion, I totally. Because, like, yeah, as soon as I see baseball bat, I'm like, it could have just been, like, a stick, right, with things in it. But now it's it's a baseball bat specifically, so it's like... Yeah. What? Okay, wait, so they play baseball? I think it, it being named baseball bat is is a lot of the problem for me. Like, And, and I was comparing this to a card uh, from uh, Streets of New Capenna called Jackhammer. Uh, it's like a magic powered jackhammer. Uh, I think I, I like the card perfectly fine aside from the name. Like if it was just, you know, a magic powered jackhammer in the art, but if it was some named something else, I'd be fine with it. But when it's called jackhammer, it's like, Oh, it's a jackhammer. 
Okay. Yeah. It could have been named after a character. There's been a few sets. Like, we had Outlaws of Thunder Junction. They don't have, uh, like, you know, like, old-timey pistols and revolvers and stuff. Of course, guns are a whole topic that we won't open. But, um, <laughs> you know, they had, like, the magic wand sort of blasters. And then um, before that, New Capenna, they had Halo guns um, and stuff like that. And now in this one, we have, like, a television that's, like, a mana rock. I do like the flavor of the, the, the television mana rock making white or black. And then you have to pay for any other color. That's a little cute. Yeah. But, but like, flavor aside, seeing that in, in Magic does really, like, I agree with Alex or take me out of it. I think it is a home run. The, like, animated fears. Fear of the Dark looks incredible. Like, these arts are incredibly cool. And just, like, the idea of, like, fear becoming personified in this haunted manor run by a demon. I like the whole story of... um uh mrs vendrell i forgot her first name uh, it's like marinara or something um marina yeah <laughs> yeah marina marina vendrell um her being in like a little bubble of like being just fine like everything looks normal but the rest of the house is haunted just because she can't be harmed in her own house by the demon or something like some weird logic the the beasts are cool the toys are cool i like just about everything Fear of abduction and unidentified hovership really stand out as being weird <laughs> as well. I don't know. There's a lot of clashing. Yeah, because then it also means like it means that they people in this universe are even though they're living in like a, a crazy mansion run by like a moth demon, they're like, well, but the little gray men are going to come and get me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I don't know. Like there's there's some home runs and then there's like some real duds. I've never seen anything like so like extreme like there's it's a very polarized in terms of the art you know what i mean why didn't they add any like really scary fears like humanity's you know, fear of humanity's unyielding greed or something oh man that's fear of missing out what are these oh, oh my bad <laughs> <laughs> since we're doing an overview of the whole set sort of i am curious about your guys's rankings of the overlords i have gotten a different answer from everyone i've asked about this what format edh right yeah, in edh let's let's talk about edh specifically like Okay. From from best to worst, what what are the overlords in your opinion? I'll let you go first, Alex. Not just so I can have more time to think. Uh, yeah, fair. Uh, Hauntwoods seems quite good, even just cast as normal mana cost. Like it's just a thing that makes uh lands a lot. Uh, the white one is just very mana efficient i guess if you do it for the impending cost i i'm gonna say the green one then the white one then the black one then the blue one then the red one let's say i can respect that interesting i think i'm gonna go green black red blue white all right i think in edh the white is the worst one for sure i think i sadly have to agree that i the white one is the worst one in edh um i think green is probably going to be the second worst one in my opinion uh, i think it has so much more use doesn't it, it turns on domain instantly like all, okay all you know you know right? what i think then you, you might be right it might be from worst to best in my case white red <laughs> green and then I like blue a lot more in EDH. Normally, I'm very low on the blue one just because of three toughness. Um, I think the black one is the best one. I've I've had people sleep on this uh, the the black overlord, the overlord of the Bale Merc. This card is incredible. Uh, Grave Digger is just a stupid card, and this mills you four before grave digging, and also you can like suspend it and get an un like a disentomb. Like it does everything. Yeah, the black one's pretty good. I mean, two mana is, like, so nice. And then you just get the yeah, thing. Yeah, it's a lot of flexibility. Yeah, it's the only one with impending five instead of four. And it's like, that was that was there for a reason. And you should not, you know, like, fall prey to the fact that it's, like, you know, it seems like, oh, why would it bring a creature back? Or even mill four. You can get any creature back, not just for, from the ones you milled, by the way. Like, it's an incredible card. Uh, and people are really sleeping on it. Like, the designers gave this impending five for a reason. I really think it is the best one in basically all formats. I thought these were legendary for no, so long. No, they're not. I didn't realize until, like, recently. I, there's yeah, just multiple they're... overlords, I guess. It's just okay. a type of guy. <laughs> yeah. It's just, <laughs> it's just an archetype of creature here. A card oh, I, I really like. Uh, and 
it's a it's kind of a specific uh type of card they've oh, they're going yes. back to is grievous wound uh and it, there are two different cards in this set that half a player's life total uh which feels intentional uh and that 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 very much feels like this set and i i i enjoy that being an edh um oh yeah i i saw a really funny thing mentioned this it's like if you're playing like impact tremors or like (laughs) or like cavalcade (laughs) of calamity and just like yeah (laughs) yeah no the 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 brutality of hitting somebody with a grievous wound uh even even just like if you're the player after them hitting them with it passing the turn and just letting (laughs) letting them sit in fear as the the next two players do their things i mean i am it's each time right or sorry it's whenever they take damage so five tokens will instantly take someone out in commander oh yeah no it's over if you get hit five times like goblin bombardment you're dead (laughs) stuff like that like here's the thing too in my opinion though uh it should be a curse i know they're not doing curses i guess but like why isn't it a curse uh, Mark Rosewater responded to this, right? Uh, I believe it's curses are an Innistrad only thing. Oh, curses are an mm. Innistrad only thing, but spirits, um, you know, demons. Meat Hook Massacre well, was Innistrad only. Meat Hook Massacre guess, was Innistrad. Like we just got Meat Hook Massacre too. It's like, <laughs> I don't know if I agree. I don't know. <laughs> Look, he's that's what that's the reason. He's, he was like he wanted to differentiate them oh. from Innistrad, so it's not a curse. That's an Innistrad <laughs> thing. It's not an Innistrad only thing. I need to clarify because there, there, there was on Cat as well. They're, they're, they're trying to make sure that, that that one cursed commander doesn't get too strong. She's oh, she's I... really almost too broken. They just gotta make sure that this doesn't push. We her haven't over. <laughs> gotten a new curse in like three years. By the way, that curse commander's just been stagnant this whole time. <laughs> I took her apart two years ago. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you can. Put it right back together. Honestly, with all the other things they're printing, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen just, like, random curses tossed into pre-cons. Oh, yeah, for sure. Curses also I, play, yeah, like, I really well in multiplayer. Like, you have to think about which opponent you're putting it on. It, it's, like, it, it's an actual interesting choice you have to make versus just, like, everything affects every opponent, period. Uh, a card I was really looking at um, that... A uh, good choice of card, by the way. But <laughs> a card I was looking at was Sawblade Skin Ripper. It's just an uncommon... Um, one black red, menace three two. You can pay two, sacrifice another creature and enchantment to put a counter on it. And at the beginning of your end step, if you sacrificed one or more permanents this turn, it deals that much damage to any target. So this is like an all or nothing mayhem devil. Mayhem devil pings one at a time. You have to, and you can do it instant speed. This one, if you like sack ten treasures on your turn, you can just like ten ball someone to the dome. It's not non token, like. Oh it, yeah yeah. It's it's not it's not symmetrical either. That's another big thing about Mayhem Devil. Like, you can't fall into framing though. Mayhem Devil is better than this card. However, you probably want to play both. Um, it, even if this just like bolts a creature or something, because it can go with creatures. Like, uh, it, it's pretty decent. It says your end step. It though. does say your end step. You can't do stuff at instant speed, sure. But mm. how like an Aristocrats deck, like even getting like a shock every turn, a, a bolt, and then eventually in the late game when you do like a big insane living death turn. And you just like twenty someone to the dome, that's gonna feel really good. Like it, it yeah, can. It's a, it's a cool card. <laughs> the fact that it can point at creatures is huge. Like you can just put it at any target, even planeswalkers. Like Mayhem Devil is broken. This doesn't have to be Mayhem Devil good. It can just be good. I know. I just wish it said Eddie on. Oh yeah, that's true. Of uh, course. But um. It's probably good enough to make the. Cut. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, I'm. I'm. It's a I'm decent 100%. body. Yeah, it's, it's three two. The fact, that it has a, the fact that it has a sacrifice attached is is quite nice. That's yeah. another thing too, yeah, exactly. actually. Yeah. Uh, uh, very good with mana. Very good with grievous wound. Very good with hatching plans. Sack another creature yeah. or enchantment. You can sack hatching plans. Yeah, I think ultimately it, it'll just work out for you. It's an assassin too, free running. <laughs> <laughs> the synergies. <laughs> I want to talk about a, a toy. Uh, Arabella abandoned doll. So this is a this could be a commander. It's red white for a one three toy artifact creature, and then whenever it attacks, it deals X damage to each opponent, and you gain X life. Where X is the number of creatures you control with power two or less. Mm. I love this power two or less theme so oh, much. Me too, like yeah. I've been I've been playing Grenzo uh, right now. My Timna Jessica deck has like a heavy influence from this. 
And I'm so happy to get another card for it. Yeah. I love the attacking with these little like dorky creatures. I like they're literally so they're literally toys in this set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh like who wants this? It's like a Neem Pakal. Um, the new Pia Nalar, uh, Council of Revival. The, these, these like vomit tokens onto the board. It's so many tokens that these mm -hmm. decks make. And then you just like attack, and then it's like, oh great, uh, I'm gonna just like you know deal eight to everyone, and I'll gain eight. Um, it is a little sad that it's not like this isn't as good as like Impact Tremors or you know uh, War Leaders Call in these Boros style aggressive decks, in my opinion. But that's the thing is you can't fall into framing once again. This will do work, um, especially if you can find some way to give it some form of evasion to get that attack every single turn. Extra combats. Whoa. Gnarly. Yeah. And at two mana, it's so efficient. Oh, yeah, of course. It reminds me a lot of Alibu, but you're just like minus three mana, you know, jam. It, it, it's pretty decent. Uh, that's the Ancient Witness from the Lorehold pre-con when it attacks, you know, yeah. the that creature or whatever. It's a decent card, but uh, it's minus three mana. Whew. Can't argue with that. Uh, why don't we talk about the land cycle? Uh, oh, yeah. Ooh, which one? The 13 or less life? I mean, that, one, that one's fun, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I was thinking about the other one. Yeah. Uh, I do love the 13 or less one. I love the, the throwback to to some of the, the Triskaidekaphobia stuff on uh, on Innistrad. Um, but these, these lands, these seem... I know these seem really good now, but I think uh, these, I imagine, are going to get worse as land types become more and more important because i was thinking about you know if this were printed last year before karlov manor it would have been like insane but and maybe karlov manor does it improve it in some ways because you get those types more often but uh i think we're seeing land types as a thing more and more often on lands as yeah. well i i think for me um what has me a little bit down on these cards i still think they're good budget option for sure like i hope they're budget and then I you just start I hope, I hope, I can only hope. Um, but for me, what has me a little down on them is um, you have all these cards that are like, you know, the reveal lands, um, uh, the snarls yeah. and the, the old ones. And it feels like sometimes like you just have, oh, I have a pain land in my hand. I have a fetch and then I have, or not a fetch, but like, you know, you, there's all these other budget duels that you're running in decks today. And it's just like, oh, I, this enters tap now. And in this case, it, it, it would just not tap for red. But what has me a little bit up on them too is it already taps for one of your colors. It, it's not colorless or add black or red. Activate only if you yeah. control a Swamper Mountain. That's big. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not like it's that's not why like I think they're land. so good. Yeah, the, I think these are incredible. Black with the, the floor is an untapped colored mana. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I'm definitely not like these are the these are gonna change the way EDH works. But like it's it's a good duel. I I, I hope their budget. I hope that you know. It makes mana more efficient, uh, efficient across the board. You know, I'm excited for it. I don't know how budget they're going to be because I think they're going to be really good in Pioneer. I think Pioneer needs these. Yeah. But you know what's kind of interesting? It's only one quarter of a cycle. That's true. Because they're only they're they're only doing the allied colors, so they have to do the enemy colors, and then they have to do the inverse of all of them, right? Because we need the red one oh. that taps for a black if you have a map swamp. That is true. So it's only. It's one quarter of the cycle. We need 20 lands to actually finish it. Mm. I wonder how they prioritize what color is the the, the main one, I guess, on, on, on the dual pairings. Maybe it's Wooberg? Uh, well, this one, they did the allied pairing. Yeah, yeah, they did the allied pairings, but which one yeah, but taps what... yeah. without restriction? Oh, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that is interesting now that, you, now that you mention it. I didn't even think about them as a quarter of a cycle. Yeah, so how long do you think before we get all 20? I mean, uh, I imagine we'll only get 10. Hopefully but... not a gap the size of Ikoria to Nukapenna. We don't even have all 10 of the Tango lands. Right? I well, know. the Tango yeah. lands suck. Worse than so... the Tango lands. No, they're great. <laughs> don't you talk down on the Tango lands. lands. <laughs> I hate the Tango lands. I can't stand them. They're fetchable. They're fetchable duels. That's fair that they're fetchable, but I have like three other cards I would rather fetch instead of them. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, you know what? Keep talking trash on the Tango Lands. It makes those Tango Land uh, expeditions go down in price. Right? <laughs> True. See, I, I, play, I play mostly two color decks, so I I play Tango Lands pretty often, and they're they're pretty cool. I, yeah, but definitely a good choice to talk about for sure. Um, I have a Commander card to talk about from the Commander Precons. Okay. Okay. Ancient Cellar Spawn. 
This card is Killer hilarious. Silver spawn. Uh, it is one black black for an enchantment creature horror. For each each spell that you cast that's a demon, horror, or nightmare, oh, yeah. costs one less. And whenever you cast a spell, the amount of mana spent to cast it was less than its mana value. Target opponent loses life equal to the difference. So, first things first, I saw a really funny deck uh, idea with a Lurin. It's an, it's a stupid idea. <laughs> you, you should just use a Sarah A, a Sarah a two-card combo with a Lurin. This is a three-card combo. You need a, a creature that bounces itself repeatedly. Yeah. Uh, still funny to point out and maybe you run both right but um the other thing to do is bolus citadel uh oh yeah <laughs> omniscient style effects you just get the full nuke of the mana value you, it's like a build your own caravac uh the 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 merciless not the merciless the spiteful he's had too many cards well, one of them the, the red black one the seven mana one anyway yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, you just start death starring people. It's so funny <laughs> to think about when you just start casting free spells. See, see, but that that includes good cards. You know, it'd be funny. Yeah. Affinity, just like classic oh, affinity. affinity. Is sick <laughs> with this. Uh, pitch cards. <laughs> oh, pitch yeah. cards. You get gnarly. Well, oh, Allosaurus Rider is a seven drop. Oh yeah, lose True. seven. Yeah. All, all the delve cards. Uh. <laughs> that is my Del. Del? <laughs> I want to play like a Grixis Storm deck where I have like um, Mizzix in play and then my like X spells getting cost reduced, you know, reduced by like 10. Yeah. I guess I'm already winning by that point though, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of Omniscience, uh, there is one last card I do want to talk about that I just want to get out of the way. Uh, it's Kona Rescue Beastie. So people are freaking out about this card. I don't think it's that good. It's It's not good at all. In the command zone, I think it's going to play like a worse Elvish Piper. Um, and sure, you can put it in a land sometimes or maybe an artifact or something. But um, in commander, to do the really broken thing, which is omniscience with this thing, um, you need to be in Simic, which means this isn't in the command zone, which means it isn't quite a two-card combo, which means, and then, you know, it sort of starts to become a lot more fair. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. But uh, this is a commander. I think it's going to be playing worse as an El than, like, it's going to be a sorcery speed Elvish Piper. Um isn't it better with like vehicles and oh yeah yeah, yeah no tap synergies yeah exactly it is yeah there are plenty is. of ways to tap it immediately huh? yeah exactly like you 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 crew it with a vehicle you use the sentinel spring leaf um, drum. yeah spring leaf drum or um jaspara sentinel there's a lot of dorks that tap for you know um a tap another creature to make a mana those are all great synergies with this but it's just going to put a big creature into play if you're just mono green in simic you get omniscience in black you get bolus of citadel you know you can that's where you start to do the really broken stuff um, in which case, this isn't in the command zone. It's not as scary. I think it's a cool card. I, I like Elvish Piper. Um, definitely not format breaking, but definitely very interesting. Yeah, it's a cool card. I like the survival mechanic as a whole. Oh, I love the survival mechanic. It's so cool. I It, it reminds me of uh, Inspired, the forgotten Born of the Gods mechanic. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, it's, but it's a lot better because you, <laughs> you get the effect immediately instead of oh, yeah. waiting a whole turn uh or having untapped synergies but born of the gods didn't even have untapped synergies so yeah I, uh, yeah a lot for, of waiting around <laughs> i enjoy inspired a lot because it incentivizes aggression now of course you have the synergies where you just tap it to a vehicle or tap it to a spring leaf drum like you mentioned but if, if sometimes you don't have those things i'm just gonna crack you for four with my kona yeah and, absolutely. You know, <laughs> i'm happy with anything that gets the game moving i got i got one last one i gotta ask you guys oh, yeah, okay. doomsday Execution. Love that Excruciator. Card. Excruciator. Doomsday love Excruciator. That card. Yeah. <laughs> I love the art. I love the effect. It's it's a okay. It's it's. I don't sex tuple black. I don't <laughs> think it's a very good card, but I like it a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a fun guy. No, it's a demon. Yeah. It's, it's not a fun that's guy. A type, that's, that's a that's a that's a no. I said a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh i see i see yeah i'm being rude i'm sorry this card sucks it's really bad but um and, and like i don't know how you use this card <laughs> for for me it's like what's gonna happen is someone's gonna p play kirik on turn four and then drop doomsday excruciator and they're gonna be at 13 life and they'll be like well i ruined this game and they're gonna laugh and then <laughs> and then we're gonna move on you know 
don't know. This this doesn't make you shuffle your library before it eggs out. So strong synergies with like Scry. Oh, that is really cool. Actually, never mind. You you've just you've just cured my my the, my, my, there, my flight of there, this There's card. a dream to be had. This is hilarious. <laughs> no, I, I like even the, even that non-game like setup out of the way. Like the the this is still a fun card. I, I like it. I like big dumb stupid cards that do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> i see this is a big dumb stupid card that does a lot just maybe not a lot that's good <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah we can move on to question zone okay all right so in the in the first episode of the podcast at the end we asked for questions and then when we went to talk about some of the questions in the second episode i just inadvertently called it the question zone which Elk was not happy with, I hate it. and I I feel like I've come up with a better name. But I also asked for riddles and questions of that sort. So I I've I've compiled a couple of good ones here. Uh, I like this one uh, from Board Pyro. Uh, question for the Question Zone: If you're tweaking your decks over time, where do you both, and I guess we'll include Alex this time as well, personally draw the line in the sand? for when the deck needs to be torn down to bare bones and started anew. A Ship of Theseus type question for MTG Brews. So at what point is it the same deck? Or do you just consider it, uh, we've scrapped the list? Okay. I feel like if I'm ever tearing a deck fully down, it's because I hate the concept of the deck. Uh, so generally, I would think of it as a different deck. But uh, I've also usually just abandoned commanders once i've ripped apart a, a list that i put together in paper with them yeah for me i i don't know if i've ever had a deck that has like changed so much over time that i eventually felt like a new commander was going to be a better option for what i had envisioned uh, for example uh or, or like the only time i've ever like swapped decks over was um going from kelsey and the plague death touch pinging which either did everything and just kept my opponents permanently plague winded or I was just doing nothing all game to um, Judith, the scourge diva who had a more value aristocrats plan who could do some death touch pinging, but was mostly value aristocrats sort of deal. Um, so there's less non games there, both directions. And that's the only time I've ever had to change a deck. Um, I mean, like, I don't know. I would have to change out a significant portion of a deck before I'd consider changing commanders depends on why the commander was chosen in the first place i guess yeah because there are some situations where i'm the commander is kind of an afterthought uh or or they they're the 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 best choice for the deck but not necessarily one that's inherently tied to it yeah i mi I mentioned linda earlier if i if i had still had linda today linda might have turned more into the um gen uh, arcanum weaver the the mardu uh, enchantment mm. swapping yeah. card mm. That's probably where I would have ended up with it today if I had more time with that deck. But if, if I just took it apart because I just didn't know how, like how it played instead of making swaps until I liked it. You know what I mean? So are there are there white curses other than the one that? Uh, oh, there, yeah, there's a few. A there's, there's the one that puts a rule of law on somebody, but I don't remember uh, any the, others. The best one is white. It's um, uh, overwhelming splendor. It humilities. It's a humility yeah, humilities for, for oh, one player. Geez. Yeah, it is. I think it also shuts off their planeswalkers too. I, maybe right? it, it might come with a clause that's like can't activate planeswalkers. But the big part is always, of course, the humility. Uh, there's also um uh, another one that's a humility, but it makes them into three threes. I... The creatures lose all Ooh. creature types and abilities, and they become three threes. It's cor uh, curse of for uh, curse of what's it called? Um, darn, I'm trying to remember the name, but. Just shows how much I've been looking at white curses. <laughs> I never knew Overwhelming Splendor was a curse. That was not oh, in Innistrad. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it, it's Amonkhet, but but okay, it's Amonkhet, it's Amonkhet yeah. but curses are Innistrad still, and we can't have yeah. them in this set because <laughs> <laughs> you, you sound bothered by the lack of curses in this set. I am so. It's been three years, Wizards. Make Grievous <laughs> Wounds a curse. It's it's a curse. <laughs> uh, they're they're doing doing linda dirty oh, of course I, I someone has it out for linda it might be mark rosewater himself <laughs> uh, like i feel like uh the deck changes when the theme or commander changes yeah otherwise i don't know 
I guess if you changed all 99 cards but it's the same theme, it's basically the same deck. You just upgraded it. Okay, another question for the question zone. Uh, somebody asked, is this Dingleberry9529? Thank you. Gotta give credit. Um, what is your favorite non-commander format and why? Uh, they also said you should definitely keep the question zone. Add Twilight Zone music, which is a funny well, idea. But I think that's copyrighted. Yeah, well, you're allowed to be wrong um, about the name does of the segment. Does uh, limited count as a format? Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can pick draft or sealed. Cube. Okay, yeah, de def definitely draft or cube. Uh, they're the same. Cube is so much fun. You're both cube heads. We love Absolutely. Cube. <laughs> I have been playing Popper recently, though, which has been. I was about to say. Popper is like right now my favorite non commander format. That, it is so fun. That's that's been a pretty good time. I, I, I've enjoyed the, the 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 short snappy decks. I let I like to get down with a little bit of uh, mono blue Delver Talarian Terror kind of you know decks. I, I like that deck in Popper a lot. That, I, that's that's it's fun. That's the one Hans ordered and plays a lot. And so I I have a lot of experience with that I, one. I love that deck so much. I. I love facing off against mono red or like Boros affinity and just like being at two life and just winning the game. Cause I, I just have the hooks in feels so good. Um, another standout is like any dark ritual deck where you can just like dark ritual out the like um, thorn of the dusk rose, like, mm, like Demir oh, control types, like yeah. cast down and snuff out. And just like, I keep the monarchy. Golgari and, gardens. Oh yeah. No, just like, it's just like gross, like control monarchy initiative kind of decks. Yuck. <laughs> I'm playing a, I'm playing mono blue fairies right now, and it's so fun. You're just like, you know, spell starter sprite counter your spells, swing with it, ninjutsu in, and ninja the yeah. deep hit you draw a card. Spell starter sprites back in hand, counter your next thing, swing ninjutsu another thing, and like, it's just fairies and ninjas. It's so yeah, cool. I I like popper a lot. It, it's cheap. Um, it, you get a lot of combat creature focused games. Of course, you get every so often you get a, a combo matchup with like goblins or whatever. But uh, in, with the new uh, Brood Scale combo deck with uh, Sadistic Glee, I think the name of the or is. Um, oh, that <laughs> interesting. They're both they're both comments. Tortured Existence decks and Popper. Oh, oh I yeah. love it. Um, yeah, no, but Cube. <laughs> I love Cube. I, I I could never stop playing Cube. Cube is a really good time, as is a good draft format. But Cube is just like a draft format, but it's almost always good yeah exactly if it's if it's designed well yeah okay i want to finish the question zone with like a few things there was a couple of suggestions for new names holovac echoes tap one blue to ponder which i thought was kind of funny <laughs> but these aren't like podcasts like segment names you know what yeah. i'm saying so i feel like I mean, we could just call it the question step right like the end step mm. i thought no? there was there, there was one that really stood out to me Mm. Pull up the podcast i'm gonna say a lot of people a lot of people just said that they liked the the question zone i, I have no opinion on this that's, that's probably fine. the winning <laughs> <laughs> i i can i can have a tie-breaking vote if you want but <laughs> I, I can inspire from myself a strong opinion to deliver but question zone it seems it's fine, fine. Yeah. <laughs> But for everybody listening, you can leave more questions that we'll get to at the next podcast. Yeah. We love answering questions. Yeah. They don't have to be in riddle form this time. You can leave normal <laughs> questions. I don't know. I think you should leave nothing but riddles. Uh, I think that's going to be a lot of fun for no uh, riddles. you two. <laughs> if you leave a riddle, we're going to assume you're like a sphinx or something and just like ban you from the channel. Sorry. Hum humans oh, only. There were more like... There were some riddles, but I don't think they were. I, I couldn't figure them out, and I didn't. I didn't want to make that this part of the podcast. Oh yeah, no, that was mostly a joke anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can leave riddles. Look, we're not going to tell you. What, oh yeah, leave as many comment. comments as you want on this video. We just uh... <laughs> should leave a normal question and then like four to five riddles. That that'd be perfect. <laughs> okay, we'll wrap it up there. I guess so. I guess it's over. Zap sounds All good. Right. We need to have like an actual like ending to the podcast that we could like do instead of just like rambling off. I can dramatically declare that Snail has decreed this podcast has ended. Snail has decreed that this podcast has ended.